back to my channel and today I am talking about how to write a synopsis. So if you've written your book and you've also probably written your query, the next dreaded step that I know a lot of people put off, I know I do, is writing your synopsis. Now if you're a really responsible person, you possibly wrote your synopsis before you ever wrote your story and I applaud you, but that is not me. Now, in general, a synopsis is about one page single space, so that's about 500 words. Some people will say that you can give up to two pages, which is great because a lot of people do tend to get wordy. I am going to give you two guides in order to write your synopsis. The first one is going to be a little bit shortened, just a quick, what are the main beats of your story and what do they mean for your book? And then the second one is going to be a little bit longer and it's going to get a little bit more into the meat of your story. Both of them should work just fine for a 500 word synopsis, but just in case you think one will fit your story better than the other, I want to give you both of these as an option. But before I get into that, I'm going to tell you a few do's and don'ts for the synopsis. Do include the ending. Don't include subplots that aren't really important to the main theme of the story. Do include all of your main player characters, including the main character, the antagonist, and the love interest if that is important. Don't include side characters that only show up for a couple of scenes but they're really interesting so you think they should be included, but really they're not important for the whole entire story. Do include world building that is important for the plot of your story. Don't include world building that is only cool because it shows your magic system and you wrote it and you want it to be included, but really it doesn't have anything to do with moving your characters or your plot forward. Do include your characters internal and external wants and motivations. Don't include dialogue. And then here's one that's a little bit back and forth for me. Some people say don't try to put voice into the synopsis because it'll just be frustrating for you since it's such a short blurb of your book, but I have read some synopses that have a little bit of voice in there and I will say they have caught my eye, but it is not necessary so don't worry yourself over that. Now let's get into the guides. So my guide number one has nine points to it and that is first impression, normal world setup, inciting incident. The point where your character flounders. When your character goes from being reactive to active. Backslide or low point. Your character's recovery. The climax. And the resolution. So, what I have done is I have created a sample of what this might look like. I think that it works really well for a story that doesn't need too many twists and turns. However, I write science fiction and fantasy. So, I, the example that I am going to give is The Hunger Games. <laughs> So for this first shortened guide, first impression, Katniss wakes up in District 12. She thinks that today is the day of the reaping. Normal world setup. Katniss goes hunting with Gale. She's the breadwinner for her family. She goes to the black market to sell her food, and she thinks some more about the reaping. Inciting incident. Prim is chosen for the Hunger Games, and Katniss volunteers to take her place. Character flounders. Katniss knows she's going to be in the Hunger Games, but she also believes that she will not survive. She does things like asking Gail to take care of her family. She goes to the training, hoping to just keep her head down and not attract any attention. Reactive to active. Once she is in the arena, she starts to fight back. She wants to survive because that is her instinct. She does things like drop the tracker tracker next onto the careers, and she teams up with Rue. Backslide. Rue is killed and she has to deal with that very real death that is happening in front of her of someone who she kind of cares about because Rue reminds her of Prim. Recovery. Katniss is dejected after Rue's death. Then the game makers make an announcement that two tributes can win as long as they are from the same district. So she goes to find Peta. Climax. Katniss and Peta are the last surviving tributes. They believe that they've won. However, the game makers say that now only one tribute can survive. Resolution. Katniss decides that they will eat the deadly nightlock, and then the game makers won't have any winner. This forces the game makers to announce that Katniss and Peter are both winners. Okay, so that is the whole entire premise of The Hunger Games in a very quick synopsis based on that nine-point synopsis guide that I just gave you. 
Now for the longer guide, and this is actually based on the Save the Cat beat sheet, and that is 15 points of your story that I think you can fill in really quickly and you can have a nice big synopsis. So the 15 beats are 1. Opening image 2. Theme stated 3. Setup 4. Catalyst 5. Debate 6. Break into Act 2 7. B story or love story 8. Fun and games 9. Midpoint 10. Bad guys close in 11. All is lost 12. Dark night of the soul 13. Break into Act 3 14. Finale 15. Final image Okay, so once again, using The Hunger Games as the story we're going to write a synopsis for. 1. Opening image of you into the normal life. So that is Katniss Everdeen wakes up in District 12. She worries for her sister. She goes hunting to feed her family. 2. Is theme stated. Now, I don't necessarily think that this is needed for a synopsis, but I will say that if I was to state a theme for The Hunger Games, I would say... Katniss believes that the only way to survive in Pan Am is to keep your head down and avoid getting chosen for the Hunger Games. And she will do anything to survive. Number three is set up or introduce every character that is in the story that will be addressed later. So I am going to talk about Katniss, Prim, and Peta. So I'll say Katniss lives in District 12 with her younger sister Prim, who she will do anything to protect. She doesn't have many friends. When she goes to the reaping, she notices Hamish, who is the only champion from District 12 to have ever won a Hunger Games, and she watches as a boy named Peta is chosen as one of the tributes. Number four is the catalyst or the life-changing event, or what I will call the inciting incident, and this is the external conflict for your character. And for Hunger Games, it is Prim is chosen to be a part of the Hunger Games. So debate, this is when the character finally takes action in order to be an active part of their story and to answer the call to adventure, and that is Katniss volunteers to take Prim's place as tribute in the Hunger Games. Number six is the break into act two moment. This is when some new characters are going to be introduced and the main character is going to go into a new world from what they've known before. This is when Katniss boards the train with Hamish, Effie Trinket, and Peta, and she goes on her way to the capital. So number seven is B story or the love story. So this doesn't necessarily mean that the character falls in love in this section. It is the heart of the story and this is the internal conflict of the story which I think is just as important as the external conflict because it shows you why the character ends up making the decisions they end up making. And in this Katniss starts to train. She meets the careers. She meets Rue who reminds her of Prim. She realizes that everyone is playing a game, including Peta, in order to survive, and she thinks that she does not want to play this game. So then there's fun and games time, which we know that in the Hunger Games, it's more games, Hunger Games. This gives the story heart, though. So this is when Katniss talks to Cinna, and she talks about how sad she is, and Cinna gives her a lot of words of wisdom. It's even when Katniss talks to Hamish, even though Hamish is a drunk and doesn't give her a lot of good advice, Number nine is the stakes are raised, it is the midpoint, and that is day one in the arena, half of the tributes are killed. Half! So Katniss still survives, she is almost captured by the careers, but Rue helps her, and she decides to team up with Rue. Number ten is the bad guys close in, so these are just all the obstacles in the arena, there are the tracker jackers, there are the birds that, I forgot their names, but they sound like someone you love. Wait, is that in this one? Anyway, so there's all of the, there's the, there's the fire, everything that is going to come up and try to kill them happens in the, in this moment. The bad guys closing in, literally in the Hunger Games, the bad guys are always present, to be honest. The all is lost, I think that this is the moment that Rue is killed and Katniss has to face the death of someone that she started to care about, someone that reminds her of Prim, which really her whole entire goal is to save Prim in the beginning of the book, and she has to face that in front of her 
That brings us into number 12, which is Dark Knight of the Soul. This is the character's reaction to the All is Lost moment, and this is when Katniss, not caring about the cameras, not caring that she's supposed to play the game, has, does a tribute to Rue, and she says goodbye to her friend, and she gives her last funeral rites, kind of, and it is seen across the whole entire country of Pan Am. Number 13, Break into Act 3. So this is when everything comes together. Katniss is all alone now, and it is announced by the game makers that now two tributes from the same district can win. And Katniss, having already overcome her need to be alone and having teamed up with Rue before, now knows that she will team up with Peeta so that they can both survive. So she goes and she finds Peeta, and he is sick as a dog. So now Katniss needs to find a way to save Peeta and save them both. So 14 is the finale. This is when everyone who's going to die dies, and everyone who's going to survive survives, and the resolution pretty much happens here. And this is when Katniss and Peter are at the cornucopia. They are they fight the final career tribute. They win. They're the winners now, and the game makers try to trick them to say that now only one can be the winner. But Katniss and Peter turn the tables, decide to take the deadly night lock berries so that no one can win. And this ruins all of the plans of the game makers. They need a champion in order for the Hunger Games to be the Hunger Games. And now they have survived, and they are the final two champions. Number 15 is the final image. And this is what do you want to leave your readers with? And in The Hunger Games, what Suzanne Collins left us with is the idea that not everything is perfect and happily ever after. Katniss has to go back to District 12 with her post-traumatic stress from being in The Hunger Games. She has to figure out her life. And Haymitch tells Katniss that the Capitol will keep its eye closer on her than ever now because of what she did in the arena. So. Those are my two guides that I have for you in order to write your synopsis. I will put them down below in the description box so you can see it all written out and so you can use it for your own synopsis writing. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns or ideas for different videos that you would like me to make, then I would really appreciate a comment down below or you can tweet at me at Catcho. And if you liked this video, then I'd love it if you'd give it a thumbs up to this video or subscription to my channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!